apocryphal or not, of that the uh, grad student who got assigned to solve computer vision over the summer. <laughs> uh, I mean, computer vision in particular is very interesting. How little, uh, how little we respected the complexity of vision. So, sixty years later, um, we're you know making progress on a bunch of that. Thankfully, not yet improved themselves. Um, but it took a whole lot of time, and all the stuff that people initially tried with bright eyed hopefulness did not work the first time they tried it or the second time or the third time or the 10th time or 20 years later. And the, and the researchers became old and grizzled and cynical veterans who would tell the next crop of bright eyed, cheerful grad students, artificial intelligence is harder than you think. And if alignment plays out the same way, the, the problem is that we do not get 50 years to try and try again and observe that we were wrong and come up with a different theory and realize that the entire thing is going to be like way more difficult than realized at the start. Because the first time you fail at aligning something much smarter than you are, you die and you do not get to try again. So he came out with it in response to the open letter. He said, a summarized machine learning expert calls for bombing data center to stop the rise of AI. This is one of the guys who's helped start all of this. He's been involved. He started the singularity thing 20 years ago. Here's his article in Newsweek magazine. We need to pause this. It's not enough with, to shut it down. I refrain from signing because I think we are understating the seriousness of the situation and asking for too little to solve it. The key issue is not human competitive intelligence, as the open letter point puts it. It's what happens after AI gets to smarter than human intelligence. Key th thresholds there may not be obvious. We definitely can't calculate in advance what happens when, and it currently seems imaginable that a research lab would cr cross critical lines without noticing. Many researchers steeped in these issues, this is very important, that's why I was spending the time on it, including myself, expect that the most likely result of building a superhumanly smart AI under anything remotely like the current circumstances is that literally everyone on earth will die. Not as in maybe possibly some remote chance, but as in that is the obvious thing that would happen. It's not that you can't put in principle surviving creating something much smarter than you. It's that it would require precision and preparation and new scientific insights and probably not having AI systems composed of a giant inscrutable arrays of fractional numbers. The likely result of humanity facing down and opposed superhuman intelligence is total loss. Valid metaphors include a 10-year-old trying to play chess against Stockfish 15, the 11th century trying to fight the 21st century, and Australopithecus trying to fight Homo sapiens. I can get that one, but I can't say nu nuclear. I don't get it. If somebody builds a too powerful AI under present conditions, I expect that every single member of the human species and all biological life on Earth dies shortly thereafter. If somebody builds, uh, so it took more than 60 years between the notion of artificial intelligence was first proposed and studied and for us to reach today's capabilities. He referenced that Dartmouth summer experiment back in 1956. Um, the moratorium on new large training runs needs to be indefinite and worldwide. There can be no exceptions, including governments or militaries. If the policy starts with the U.S., then China needs to see that the U.S. is not seeking an advantage, but rather to try, rather than trying to prevent a horrifically dangerous technology which can have no true owner and which will kill everyone in the U.S. and China and on Earth. And he says, if you can't get it done, shut it down. And if you can't shut it down, then you need to start tracking things. And he says, at the end, track all GPUs sold. If intelligence says that a country outside the agreement is building a GPU cluster, be less scared of shooting a shooting conflict between nations than of a moratorium being violated. Be willing to destroy a rogue data center by airstrike. Bye-bye, New Albany.
There was another article I had this week, How the Metaverse Ruined My Life. That was an editorial, I think, in the New York Times. Frame nothing as a conflict between national interests. Have a quick, listen, and this is how he concludes. Shut it all down. We are not ready. We are not on track to be significantly readier in the foreseeable future. If we go ahead on this, everyone will die, including children who did not choose this and did not do anything wrong. Now, Sam Altman came out and said, well, I disagree with Eliezer. But this is serious stuff. You, you understand this is the Tower of Babel. And I, I'm really serious when I say, like, what we know as what could be the beast system, I forget who it was, one of my friends said something like, the technology required for the beast, we've gone way beyond it. How long is God going to let this go? This is religious warfare, spiritual warfare that we're engaged in. This is, this is very serious stuff. Time is short. I hope I've made that point today. This came up at the White House press briefing. What Eliezer had said in his article in Time magazine. Here's Peter Ducey uh, questioning Corinne Jean-Pierre about this. I, now, let's watch the response of the, of the lemmings in the room when Peter asked the question the second time. Here we go. Thank you on artificial intelligence. 1,000 of the world's smartest people are saying that AI <coughs> pose profound risks to society and humanity. They want you guys to regulate it. Will you? You're talking about the letter that was released yesterday. So, uh, look, it highlights a number uh, a number of challenges addressed directly uh, in uh, in the administration's blueprint for an AI uh, Bill of Rights, which was released last October, as I'm sure you've been following, Peter. It includes principles and practices AI creators can use to ensure uh, protections related to safety, civil rights, civil liberties, or are integrated into AI systems from start to finish. Uh, right now, there's a comprehensive process that is underway to ensure a cohesive federal government approach to AI-related risk and opportunities, including how to ensure that AI innovation and deployment uh, proceeds with appropriate pr prudence and safety foremost in mind. And so we're going to, be, I don't have anything to announce at this point, at this time, but there is a comprehensive process in place. So announcements aside, there is now a, uh, <laughs> there's an expert from the Machine Intelligence Research Institute who says that if there is not an indefinite pause on AI development, this is a quote, literally everyone on earth will die. <laughs> Would you agree that does not sound good? <laughs> Your delivery, Peter, is quite, it's quite something. It sounds crazy, but is it? Uh, all I can say is that there's a comprehensive process in place. We put out a blueprint back in October, as you know. I don't have anything to share. Uh, we have seen the letter. We understand what their concerns are. Uh, again, a comprehensive process. We're going to let that, we'll let that flow. So is President Biden worried? that artificial intelligence could become self-aware? Look, we are, again, there's a comprehensive process. Uh, we are taking this very seriously. We put our blueprint out uh, back in October. I just don't want to get ahead of our findings and what, that, uh, what that's going to look like. Uh, but it is a cohesive federal government approach to AI-related risks, as you just laid out in a very dramatic way, uh, but clearly... Is there anything <laughs> more dramatic? I mean, you just read it. Literally it, it, everyone that, on Earth will die. Pretty, pretty dramatic, pretty dramatic. Um, <laughs> we're going to move on, but thank you, Peter. Thank you for the drama. Go ahead. You think? So listen, the question is, is AI self-aware? So let me just think, this is just off the top of my head. So Obama was the most self-aware human being ever to be in the office of presidency. Would you agree? He was self-aware like nobody ever. Now we come into the third Obama term, the Obama administration. And the question is, is the president self-aware? But listen, when Peter asked the legitimate question, Eliezer Lewandowski is not some thing. So there's going to be different responses to this. There's going to be people, oh, it's, it's, 
you're a nut. There's going to be people that say, you know, we need to proceed carefully. And then there's going to be people that are like, we're going for everything. And so in that environment, do you think China's going to stop? You think North Korea, Russia, they're going to stop? And the question then becomes, where does it all go? And you got to go do it like they do just to keep up to protect yourself. And I keep thinking of that uh, array of uh, that cloud of drones that they had in the United Arab Emirates to celebrate the New Year in Abu Dhabi, making art pictures in the sky with drones. But a human being couldn't do that. It had to be machine and artificial intelligence and that sort of thing. But if you think that's just, oh, look at the pretty lights in the sky, that has a military application. And we're... Um, you start to get a better idea of phrases that you see in prophet, prophetic texts in the New Testament about if you know those days were not cut short, no flesh would be saved. Do you, do you have a little bit of a better grasp of why you should look forward to the return of the Lord? Seriously, it, this is a religious thing that's going on. It's a prophetic thing that's going on. And so with Jonathan Medved said, you know, we live in the story. Yeah, we're living in the story right now. Right now, right here, right now. And they laugh at him like, oh, Peter, you think the world's coming to an end? Come on. A week and a half before the New York Times and all the big mainstream media, all those guys in the rooms, oh, Climate change is going to kill us all in 50 years. But don't look at the shiny object right in front of your eyes, trying to read your eye. There's a rapidly closing window for opportunity to secure a livable and sustainable future for all. There's a very high confidence. This is the most striking sentence in a 37-page 30 page summary issued today of the latest report by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. It tells us what's possible. It tells us the stakes. But don't let Eliezer Ludowski talk about it, because that's, that's funny. You, th you think this could kill us? <laughs> Come on. It's cow farts that's going to kill us. Gas stoves, heat, fire, refrigeration. It, this is insane. Um, so I need to stop. It, this, well, this is the front page of the Financial Times Friday or yesterday. And a couple like prepare for a multi polar currency world, I'll talk, I'll do something in midweek about that. China war in Europe, but look at this little headline up there above uh, Bolsonaro, who's returning to Brazil. By the way, do you think that Brazil joining the BRICS this week had anything to do with the election result involving Mr. Bolsonaro? They put Luna in place, and now Brazil's joining in with Russia and China to get rid of the U.S. dollar. And that's happening at Relative, we've been talking about it's going to happen eventually, but then it's like, how did you go bankrupt? Well, two ways, it, gradually, then suddenly. How did the U.S. dollar lose its thing? And so look at this, AI's ex existential threat to humanity, editorial. Multiple red flags are not yet slowing the generative AI train. This is the staid, stiff, Financial Times of London saying, whoa, hey, wait a minute. Nobody in the Financial Times room is laughing like those idiots at the White House press room. Because this is serious stuff. And yeah, humanity is at stake. Look at what they're doing with this. This is the Atlantic article. The real Taylor Swift, they, they're doing TikTok videos and stuff 
using artificial generative intelligence to make it look like Taylor Swift is telling you to have a good day and you're a good person. And they're all over the internet. So it says this real Taylor Swift would never do all this, but she's also a fan creation. Another Atlantic article, welcome, welcome to the big blur. So I'll do midweek, I'll talk about central bank digital currencies because there's a lot happening in this space and it's all connected to this too. Um, and it's concerning, but look, um, I know the Lord's coming back. Uh, there was an article here, I'll just show you one because it kind of has a local aspect to it. Here you go. J.P. Morgan joins the biometric palm and face ID race. Oh, you can pay with your hand and pay with your face. And you see them all over the place. Credit cards only, no cash. Panera, you can wave your palm now and pay at Panera. You can do that at Amazon, I think Whole, I don't know if you can do it at Whole Foods. But, um, It's an interesting time to be alive. And you need to be ready for what happens if you're not. And that's to accept the gospel of Jesus Christ. Believe that he came to earth, born of a virgin, lived a perfect life, died for, in our place for our sins so we could have a relationship with God, rose from the dead, ascended to heaven, and he's coming back to set up a kingdom. That's what we should look forward to but we need to be ready for the stuff that happens in between. And we've been told about the parameters of that, and I think we're living in it. We're living in that story right now. So let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for uh, the opportunity that we have to still talk about these things. We pray that you'll protect us, give us wisdom, give us courage, help us to take advantage of opportunities to share the gospel with those around us, um, and to be... Uh, led by your spirit in everything so that we will act wisely in everything that we do and act in such a way that will glorify you. Bless us this week in Jesus' name. Amen.